Welcome back to Moms. We're out here with the chickens because I'm going to do the second video in my little series of Do You Really Want Chickens? If you missed the first one, which was just mainly comparing the price of eggs to the price of raising chickens, I'll drop a link to that in the bottom. Um, so I'm assuming if you've made it past that one that your answer is either yes or well maybe. So I thought we'd just come out here and look at the setup. I've been doing this for a lot of years and this is the smallest flock I've had. We Last year we got to a point where all of our birds were pretty old so we lost a lot of them. Um, then we had some problems with hawks and whatever and we lost some more so we're starting up again and I am trying to prepare for a lot of the mistakes that I've had in the past so that I don't have those. I watched a lot of videos of people telling you don't get chickens, you don't want chickens. Well, all of those people had chickens. So, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you need to be prepared, but if you get prepared correctly, then there's no reason why you can't have a few chickens and enjoy them. I mean, thank you. You, um, you don't save a lot of money, I'll be honest, but you do get a product that you know what's in it from start to finish. And, you know, it's really cool when we just want egg breakfast or supper, and I can run out and grab some, <laughs> he's talking today, some fresh eggs. So, first of all, you don't have to have a rooster to have eggs. I raise biddies, I hatch my own. So that's why I have a rooster in each pen, but you don't have to have that. In fact, if you're not going to hatch, if you're not going to hatch your own, you probably don't want a rooster because some of them can be pretty aggressive, and that's feed that you know you're getting no product from. So if you just want some eggs, maybe just some hens. Before you ever get biddies, you need to be prepared for this because it only takes about a month and those biddies are big enough to go outside, you know, if it's spring, and keeping them inside at, or in a small pen after that, that that's, a, that's a pain. So let's look at what you need to prepare for. On, for the long term because they're only babies for a month or so and they're big for anywhere from five to seven years so <laughs> they're all going to talk now I fed them some some treat I thought maybe it would keep them quiet but um, anyway I have used a lot of different chicken pens chicken houses I've done the We've actually raised chickens commercially, so I've had, you know, 100,000 birds at one time, and here I've got six. So I'm really enjoying this because I'm keeping it manageable. So the first thing you need to decide is how many birds do you want? If you just want eggs for you to eat, then three or four birds is going to be plenty. I mean, in peak season, that will get you almost two dozen eggs a week. So, you know, let's keep it keep it manageable. You can always add to your flock, but it's very disturbing to have to cull your flock. So, let's keep that in mind. I've used the wooden, the little wooden houses. I've used dog houses. I've had the last small go round I had, we got a portable, a little tiny portable building and got it all set up. And then that requires a lot of upkeep. They did have a much larger yard to run in, but that's how the hawks and I think a fox maybe, or maybe a cat, I don't know, got in there and got just about all we had over the long term. So, you know, those kind of things take time. What I have finally landed on at this point is these omelet houses, and I did not collect all of this at one time. This is my hobby, so yes, I have, um, you know, put a lot more into it than I'll ever get out of it, but there's some things you can take away. This one right here is probably my favorite setup. 
This is plenty big enough for, you know, three to four hens. It's the omelet, and I'll put a link to the, the website. You can design your own however big you want it. And they have wheels on them, so you can slide them around and give the birds fresh grass whenever they want. You can add the walk-in attachment, which I like to do because I like to get in there with them. And hens love a perch. So that's why they have the perch in there. Now, this is the same setup. It just has a much longer run and a longer walk-in. And this is where I keep the big birds. These are black copper marins. And if you're interested, you can Google that. They lay the chocolate covered eggs that are absolutely out of this world. Now, my rooster here, he is one that is very aggressive. He'll probably, he'll probably jump at me before it's all over. But we just have an agreement. I throw him some treats in one end of the pen and then I get in there and do what I have to do. And uh, he's good with it. My smaller pen here, I have some bantams in it and these are Polish bantams. They're a little bit shy. It also has the wheels on it. And I am loving these birds. They're very docile. They're small, so they don't eat as much. The rooster is not aggressive. Um, the eggs are actually not much smaller than regular size eggs. I was surprised. And they eat less, so you're getting more product for less input. And this was my starter pen. I used this at first just for my birds that I hatched and when they got too big to be in the brooder, I could put them out here. So that's what I keep it for and I also use it as a temporary pen. So the big pen, whenever I move it, it's, it's a process. So I can move the big birds out here into this pen while I take a day to move their big pen to a new grassier area. So it's a temporary pen and it's like a teenage pen for the teenage birds. Well, I had to move inside after all. Between the wind and the roosters crowing and the dogs being bad and running off, it just wasn't worth it anymore. And um, so this way I can show you. These are the eggs. This one is a commercial egg, an excellence best. This is one of the eggs from my black copper marins, and this is an egg from one of the bantams. It's really not that much, you know, in fact, I have found that two big eggs is too much, but two of these is just right. You know, it's like an egg and a half. So I'm really, I'm going to expand my Banty flock as soon as possible. I'm gonna be hatching some more, so that's gonna be interesting. My best piece of advice to anybody just starting to get a few birds, plan for the end first. So get online, and like I said, I'll put links down to the omelet pins. Those pins are top of the line. I've had one of mine I've had for almost two years now, and then I've added another one about a year ago, and then I just got the one that the bands are in. I really like them. The purpose of a pen is not so much to keep your chickens in, but to keep the predators out. These have wire skirts to them around the outside edge so dogs or foxes or whatever can't dig into because they're gonna try to dig right there at the edge. They also have a cover so hawks can't land and get in there and get them. I have ha been using that one for two years now and have not lost a bird to anything. And out in the country, that is something else. So I highly recommend those. There's a lot of other options though that may be a little less expensive, but if you choose a wooden pen, and I've had a lot of those, they look so cute. I've had them that look like log cabins or country stores or whatever. They look cute for about the first year, maybe two. And then after that, after being out in the sun and the weather for that long, plus having chickens on them, they begin to deteriorate. So. 
These, the one I've had for two years, it looks just as good as the one I just got. It hasn't faded. It, you can take it all apart. You can wash it. It is so easy to clean it out and move it around. If you don't have a, a place to fence off a big area, you're going to want to move it because chickens scratch the ground and they're going to, you know, make it all dirt. So you want to be able to move them around just a little. You don't have to pick it up and move it, you know, a mile. But a few feet here and there makes all the difference. There's one of them I just move it up about five feet and back about five feet. By the time the, you know, the back five feet has been scratched up, the front five feet has grown back. So it's really cool. And there's a lot of ways to, you know, get them more grass. And they don't have to have grass, but they do like it. Um, and I'm going to do some other videos about waterers and feeders because there's a lot of new stuff there. Like I said, I'm kind of starting over and I'm trying to alleviate all of the downsides that I've had over the years. Now, you need to pick where you're going to put your pen. Take it from mom. Don't put it by a door that a lot of people go in and out because I don't care how hard you try. In the heat of the summer, you're going to have flies near or in the pen. They like the feed, the chicken manure, whatever. So keep it away from a door. Otherwise, every time you open a door, five or ten flies are going to come in. Believe me. So mine is in the back where it's not, you know, in, in direct line. And I'm going to be planting some shrubs or whatever in between my porch and the pens now. To kind of give another a bit of a barrier so biggest tip right now if you know that you want birds plan for the big birds get that all set up and to do that you need to know how many um, like I said I recommend no more than four to get started because you can always pick up a couple more somewhere that's no problem now, it is going to be four to six months before these birds start to lay, so be ready for that. Don't think you're fixing a, that they're fixing to pop a dozen, you know, two weeks after you put them out there, because it's not happening. But it will happen, and you'll be so proud when you open that door and see the nest box in there, and it's awesome when you get your first egg. There's nothing like it. Um, so if you have some questions, you can drop them in the comments. I'm just kind of winging this, and I'm not much of a winger. I like to plan these out and I usually have notes and cards and all this other stuff. So I'm just kind of, you know, here's what it's like daily life with some chickens. And now's the season. So get online, look for a house, see what kind of a house you can get. Oh, and by the way, those houses will tell you that, oh, this is plenty big for six to eight chickens. No, you need to at least not two birds off of whatever they say it's big enough for because chickens like to have some room okay so drop some questions down below and i'll try to address those in my next video and in the next video we're going to talk about how to start caring for the babies because that's when it's fun so hit that subscribe button give me a like and i'll see you here at mom's next time thanks for watching